season one, event one. This is the MLP Mesa by Margaritaville. Welcome to championship court. We have been waiting and waiting for this event to finally take place. It's going to be bigger and better than ever in 2023. You can see our players are starting to get warmed up here on championship court. And warmed up is the right term because it's a bit chilly here in Arizona. We're actually hanging out in Mesa, Arizona at the Legacy Sports Complex. But let's get you uh, a little bit of a glimpse into what our day is going to look like. So we will start off with five total matches, but the Bay Area Breakers are up first facing off against the Columbus Pickleball Club. Then at the 10 a.m. hour local time, Arizona Drive and the Atlanta Bouncers will be up next. You can see the 12 o'clock, 2 o'clock, as well as the 4 p.m. match is taking place. Now this Major League Pickleball, it's a team format. It has taken over the pickleball landscape. It's a fan favorite. We can't wait to see these dynamic pairings come to real life. Now it's also time to introduce you to our crew because we've got a pretty epic one. I'm Cameron Irwin and I also am joined by pro pickleball player Adam Stone. And Adam, we have talked about 2023 season. It's bigger and better than ever. There are now the premier level, the challenger level, my goodness, 12 teams in both regards. What are you most looking forward to in 2023? Well, uh, uh, thanks for that lovely introduction, Cameron. <laughs> but the slogan for MLP is there's nothing else like it. And I think the biggest thing for me with this 24 full teams, 12 Premier, 12 Challenger, is all these players have played tournaments. So they're all s some more experienced than others. But... There's nothing like MLP. It's a different format. It's a different energy. And I'm going to see how these players respond to it. I can't wait. Well, I'm glad that you bring up a different format because we have the third member of our crew, Cameron Blackwood, who is also down on championship court. And she knows exactly how this format works. Maybe, Cam, you can give us a little bit of a walkthrough. <laughs> giving us a little bit of insight and obviously we're working out the mics just a little bit here but she's done a phenomenal job in terms of kind of setting the scene for 2023 so can you give us a, just a little bit of an intro in terms of how these games are played out for these matches absolutely so we are going to have uh, four players uh, on each team two men two women we will start off uh, ladies first of course with women's doubles men's doubles and then two mixed doubles matches for every one of these challenger and premier uh, uh, level competitions and then of course uh, the patented dream breaker if we end up with a 2-2 of course we're going to have some uh, uh, some 3-1 and some 4-0 after the doubles uh, portion of the match. But if we get to 2-2, the Dream Breaker comes into play. And that is a rotation of four points for each player on your team set up in a specific order uh, right before that Dream Breaker starts. And man, it is has to be the most exciting thing in pickleball. Now today, it's all about the challenger level. We have three groups in play with four teams in each of those groups. So we will actually be playing for points to this point. Yes. Every Everything matters in terms of seeding to then get to the next round. So can you give me a little bit of a glimpse into how every point matters in MLB format in this round robin? Absolutely. Three groups of four. Two teams are going to be able to advance from each group. That gives us six teams. And the top two seeds of those six will have to not play a match, which is a huge deal, especially in this format uh, where anything can happen with the Dream Breaker. So to have that by the, the, uh, the next four teams will play for two spots and then they will play a semi-final matchup against those two seeded teams. Uh, just just exciting time. Yeah, we want to find out exactly who's going to top each of these groups. There are three. We've got Group A, Group B, and Group C. We are starting off in Group Number A. So if you take a look, we got the Bay Area Breakers facing off against the Columbus Pickleball Club. We've got Eva Radzikowska, Rachel Sutton, 
Summers, Pablo Tejas, and Christian Alshon on the Bay Area Breakers. Give me a little bit of a dynamic that you see with the Bay Area Breakers. Uh, well, this is going to be a recurring theme throughout the Challenger bracket. There's going to be a mix of uh, veteran players and high upside talented players with maybe a little less on the results side because they're early in their careers. So I think this team, the Bay Area Breakers, has some of the highest upside in the in, in the tournament with uh, Pablo Tejas, probably the most established player on their team, but really high upside with Eva Ratzikowska, Rachel Summers, and of course Christian Alshon, uh, a very, very high-end tennis player, uh, one year at the University of Virginia and uh, currently at the University of Chicago. Yeah, we saw him on uh, the P PPA Tour just a week ago. It seems like, it feels like just a week ago, uh, facing off against Tyson McGuffin. He yes, picked so up that singles victory. That was something. Absolutely. Second round, too. So absolute upset. And the man, the man's an athlete. He moves like a gazelle out there. If he can refine his game and add some uh, touch and feel and good decision making with, with, with his power and his shot making ability, watch out, everyone. Well, and just in terms of identification, that is Eva Radzikowska currently on your screen. And now let's head to the Columbus Pickleball Club. We've got Millen Rain, they call her Millie. Rebecca Ryan, they call her Becky. And Yates Johnson and Carson Klinger. So give me a little bit of a lowdown, expectations for this team. Right, very solid team as well. Millie Rain, the only one. So uh, I mentioned it uh, earlier with the breakers. So we only have two of the eight players on court for this first match that have MLP experience. So uh, I think that'll be big for Millie. Uh, we have uh, Rebecca Becky Ryan, Carson Klinger, uh, and Yates Johnson. Johnson. Yates Johnson, his brother Hunter, they've had some good results lately. Uh, he is a very talented tennis player as well, coming over from the Pro Doubles Tour, a high of a 250 ranking. And Carson Klinger, the young buck at 16 years old, and he's an Ohio native, so it makes a lot of sense with the hometown team, Columbus, <laughs> uh, picking him up. Well, it looks like they're just about ready to get started on championship court. Again, thanks so much for joining us here for our coverage. We've got courts going on. Just about everywhere it feels like this is a beautiful facility but I have to mention it's a little bit chilly <laughs> and that really affects the game though right I know even though we're in Arizona high altitude and we had some wind yesterday afternoon as a lot of these players were out on the practice check, course getting check. set and Cameron now the weather with mic. the chilliness it affects the ball as well it's You're absolutely true right? I think Just it's an underrated mic. part a lot of people don't realize that the temperature really affects check play. one two and not check. only is the ball hard oh, it check will one, two. Fly it doesn't, when it's hard like that, it doesn't quite grab to get the check spin one, two, also. So a one, big two. issue, and we'll see how the players check can handle one, it out there in this first matchup. All right, well, surely these stands will start to fill in. Again, it's just 8 a.m. or 8.18 here, local time. A nominal facility. We have about 30 or so courts here. All individually fenced. Very, very nice facility. Uh, I believe it's right around the year anniversary of opening up. I believe it was January last year, so really excited to see more of these facilities popping up around the U.S. And I will say, too, this championship court is beautiful aesthetically, but then you also have to pay attention. We actually have a cover now over the top of championship court, so how that might shape and change and affect the level of play and style of play could be interesting, as well as the sun. You can see on our video board the sun coming in to one side. Definitely uh, sun in the eyes at one. Oh, yes. So so they, they have actually, the first time I played, at this venue, they did not have these uh, sun barriers up, so I think that's really going to help. But, but when, when when you're a little bit shaded and you have a sliver of sun uh, slipping through, this 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 game is very fast, and to have that uh, a little bit of uh, issue with the eyes or seeing the ball, we'll, we'll we'll see if the if the players can handle that or that uh, creates some issues moving forward. Court still awaiting players who are standing by, waiting for some walkout songs, I believe, at this point. Again, Cameron Irwin alongside Adam Stone. Cameron Blackwood is with us as well. You caught a glimpse of her. Hopefully we can catch her audio soon enough as she brings so many phenomenal insights as well, a professional pickleball player in her own right. Hey, I'll tell you what, Adam with the Camerons is not the worst place <laughs> to be. I'm, I'm, I'm okay with it, looking forward yeah. to today. And I have to say that we got some beautiful navy jumpsuits here. We got some red 
from Columbus. Everybody's looking good out there. <laughs> well, and I'm glad that you bring that up because this is such a team dynamic and it's so different than anything else in pickleball in that regard. You have to build chemistry, camaraderie in such a short period of time. Maybe you get a handful of practices in with the, the other members of your team, but then you're also working with team owners who are living, breathing, and just loving pickleball. It's one of the best atmospheres. Uh, no, no question. So this, uh, uh, a lot of the atmospheres at, at these at these regular uh, uh, tournaments throughout the year, uh, great and and very very energetic. But hey, this is MLP. It <laughs> is different. That is their slogan. There is nothing else like it. And you can you can see it. You can see it and you can feel it. Everyone's taking big deep breaths out there. Everyone's tight. They want to play well for not only themselves but their 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 three uh, teammates and their team owners. Without a doubt. Well, you mentioned team owners. We can give you just a little bit of a glimpse uh, into some of the names just in this challenger level alone. You have the Bay Area Breakers who are soon to be out on the court, the Utah Black Diamonds, Columbus Pickleball Club, the DC Pickleball Club. Then that's just Group A. You move on to Group B. You've got Chicago Slice. This is one of my favorites, the Orlando Squeeze, <laughs> and the Texas Ranchers as well as the Miami Pickleball Club. Then in Group C, you have the Atlanta Bouncers, the Dallas Pickleball Club, the Brooklyn Aces, and the Arizona Drive. Some, some really elite names in so many of these teams. You know, you look around at some of the matchups, and there's some continuity Hello, is this thing in on? terms of different teams. And I don't know, I look at the, the Brooklyn Aces, and there's, some, there's a familiar name there for you, at least two of them, right? Yeah, Corinne Carr. And uh, believe it or not, the Brooklyn Aces have two pregnant ladies on the team. I know. Sierra Gaten Leach and Corinne Carr. So uh, obviously that is a pretty awesome storyline. And I'll tell you what, on paper, that team's pretty dang solid, and I can easily no, see them coming out of uh, no, Group C, I believe. So, uh, yeah, it's 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 good stuff. We, I mean, this has gone from eight teams, good, good season team. one, 12 teams, season two, and then 24 here in season three. Just really awesome to see the growth of uh, Major League Pickleball. Without a doubt, well, you mentioned the teams being added. We had multiple drafts in place. The Premier Draft went first, then the Challenger Draft came second. We have 48 players in each level. And then what's interesting too, we'll be splitting the 2023 season into, or year into two different seasons where there will be a redraft in the middle after the first three events. And the premier level owners will then switch to the challenger level owners. So there will be a chance to set up the relegation system. So really 2023 is a big setup year for 2024. Exactly right. Everything matters uh, where you slot in for 2024. So uh, of course the individual matches in the individual six tournaments huge but we're, we're playing for the, the whole year and, and to, to solidify your spot in that Premier League for 2024. And we've got all four ladies getting warmed up now on our court. The red pants is Millen Rain on the far side of your screen. And you got you got Becky Ryan, obviously from New Jersey. No 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 sweats. She's got the skirt on already. She's got the sleeveless shirt. She, this is just another day for her. I'm kind of loving that actually. She's like, you guys don't know cold. You yeah don't right. Know cold. And then if you notice, you have over here on the right side, you have Marietta, Georgia, and Naples, Florida, in full in full <laughs> full cover. So makes a little bit of sense. <laughs> This, the women's match is always going to be the one that sets you up feeling like you're the one under pressure, the one applying the pressure. Yeah, definitely. The starting off first, and it's just such a huge deal. I mean, there's only four points to be had uh, here in these team events. So uh, to, to, to get that first win or possibly put yourself in a little hole after the women's doubles, it kind of affects the subsequent three matches. So uh, quick start, always important in sports, but definitely in this format, Cameron. Starting to warm up not only the dinks but the serves. Uh -huh. That's the usual progression for the warm up for these pro players. And 
one of the interesting things too, a little bit different rally scoring here at MLP and then also what side you're playing. We're not necessarily switching <laughs> like yes. regu regular pickleball. Correct, so you are gonna hold your side and you can oh, yeah. switch spots yeah. with your partner on timeouts or the changeover at 11 because we will be playing to 21 and win by two. So yeah, lots of different strategery and uh, I think that I think that it's a little bit up in the air what the optimal strategy is for some of these teams with this new format. So it's just it's just going to be great to see what everyone comes up with. And you know, if the uh, the lady heavy squads or the guy heavy squads, and what exactly is the optimal setup and, and team construction? And we'll just have to see. Well, it looks like we are ready to go. Rad Zikowska and Summers versus Rain and Ryan. Oh, that's a great, I love that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Rain and Ryan, I love it. There's a lot of R's out there right now. Get ready for a tongue twister in game number one. All right, the first serve of 2023 here on Championship Court is about to get underway. Summers will get us started. Drive that is successful to start off. Great topspin too. Nice uh, semi-western grip, allowing her to get underneath that ball and really get a lot of tumble on it. So the first one, very quality from Becky Ryan, neutralized by Eva Radzikowska. Uh, second attempt from Becky Ryan, a little wide. And it's already starting to get a little bit windy just from our broadcast position. We're up above the court, and it's going to be interesting to talk to the players and find out exactly how the wind is working here in championship court, because it can be a little swirly sometimes. Right. Sometimes when you're in this enclosure, it kind of stops the wind. Sometimes it kind of funnels through and plays tricks with the wind. So uh, we'll see. Yeah, yeah. We've seen quite a few drives right now from the Bay Area Breakers. I don't think I've seen a drop yet. Maybe one? Maybe one. So mi mixed results so far. Uh, two misses there now. The last two backhand attempts for Rachel Summers, but both Radzikowska and Summers, very nice singles player. I expect to see those drives continue. That ball is just long. Nice job, nice scrap uh, from Becky Ryan and Millie Rain. You can even hear the difference, the sound of the ball is making with yes. the paddle right now in terms of the chill in the air. It's, it even sounds different than normal. Looks like we're having a possible look wide to me. They are debating whether they should challenge or not. Let's see what's happening. We do get a video, re, a, a video challenge. Oh, they decided you... not to. I think it was a mistake because I do think that ball was wide. No one had a clear shot of it. You only get one attempt early in the game. That's that's tough. You get one attempt, but if you get it correct, you get to maintain that attempt. Exactly right. That's a big forehand from Ava Radzikowska. She's like, get that backhand out of there, Rachel Summers. I got this one. And she finishes nicely. That's, that's another thing to bring up, uh, middle ball confusion. A lot of these, th these are drafted players. These are not set teams that, are, that travel the circuit together. So definitely something to monitor in these matches. And again, that is a wicked forehand from Radzikowska. Nice angle there. Yeah, it's clear cut that we have uh, the Columbus team a little bit more defensive and the, and the Bay Area Breakers letting it rip right now. Nice 
job by Millie Rain. Big rip from Millie. And you see Becky Ryan really liking to step to her left and run around her back end with forehand dinks. Let's see if that doesn't get her in a little bit of trouble with her court positioning. just dictating terms in terms of taking away that middle wall. Mm -hmm. That hard ball when you're in the midcourt trying to reset in the kitchen, really tough to get it down. The breakers have had many, many shots early in this match, shoulder, shoulder level or above, and that makes it really tough on Columbus. <laughs> Some nice digs in the midcourt from Becky Ryan, definitely what she's known for, and Eva Radzikowska not quite getting underneath of that backhand enough. She's looking to attack herself. She just hasn't seen many. That's exactly right. I'll tell you what, the ball, she's not, she's a little slight in her frame, but that ball comes off her paddle with a lot of life when she takes a big cut at it. there. <laughs> Millie Rain is just going, somebody give me the ball. We'll, we'll just label that coming in hot. <laughs> Very nice. And able to keep that ball in from a low position. Fantastic play from Millie Rain. Score is 9-9. Nine, nine. <laughs> Zikowska. Great angle, and you're exactly right. That forehand has been on point early in this match. Well, and she's shown great range. Yeah, nice job. She's got definitely has the most length on the court as well. Standing about a half head taller than the three uh, other ladies on court, and we are at the change. So we have hit 11 to 9, which means we are now at the change of end. So we will switch side just with a two point margin. We've got Cameron Blackwood joining us. What's going on down there, Cam? Well, Millen Rain is the Millen Rain is the only woman out here that has been on the MLP court before. So a lot of nerves playing to factor right now. But like you said, the barrier breakers came out firing right now. I think on the other side, Columbus needs to slow the ball down. Let's make the points a little bit longer. Pick your moments when you're going to speed up. And when they did that, they came back and tied it up 9-9. Nine to nine. So on the side of Columbus, I think they're going to get a lot more free points switching sides because that sun is hitting at such a harsh uh, line right there on the other side side of the court. Well, and then Kim, I'm glad you bring up the sun. I'm curious too, because you're actually court level. What's the wind like down there right now in terms of direction? What are you feeling? It's really not playing too much of a factor right now. Okay. Uh, it, it doesn't seem to be swirling too much, maybe here and there, but right now the sun is the biggest factor right now. And especially as it starts to get a little bit higher, it's going to reflect off these bleachers right into the player's eyes. They're going to have to adjust. Thanks, Cam. Great insight from court side. So two points of difference now after the change of end. It's a nice reset from Radzikowska. Good stuff. And she's got her partner there at the kitchen line getting down on that backhand right at the feet of Becky Ryan. Even better than power placement. Her grip really allows to her to get a lot of topspin on not only her power shots, but her soft shots as well. Experience out there. We caught a 
up with Scott Crandall, who's the coach for the Breakers. And I said, what's the message? And he goes, well, I'm going to be in summer's ear. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's the one. Eva has some incredible tennis background. She's been in big moments before in her athletic career. He said, but summer's, I'm going to definitely be the positive one in her ear constantly. Yeah, definitely. And summer's uh, is showing that Scott was in her ear <laughs> leading up to this match, but no slouch at all. Uh, went to the University of Mary Washington, a two-time All-American in singles there. So at the uh, tender age of, I believe, 18? But that can't be right. Four, so I was way off. <laughs> well, I mean, she went to the University of Mary, you know, Mary it's Washington. Never, it's never bad when you're talking about a woman to just go way low. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. There you go. There you go. Thanks for bailing me out there, I partner. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I mean, just it's just been some really high-level shot making from the breakers so far. Let's see if uh, if Columbus can weather the storm. Otherwise, we're going to be headed to men's doubles pretty quickly. So 14 to nine here. to her hip there on that forehand. Yeah, a little, little too far off the kitchen line as well. Looking for that rip four or five feet off the kitchen makes it tough to control. that dink a little high and Radzikowska had a good look at a cross court backhand angle but the, the net had other ideas. That's two. <laughs> and back to back. Hey sometimes oh, it takes uh, two fortunate situations and all of a sudden they're only down uh, two points. Here we go. Oh no, Millie, tough break on the serve. Flipping the tape landing in the kitchen. That is a service fault ball back over to the breakers. 15-12 now. Well, they had some unfortunate luck with the wet tape and that one clips and, and unable to uh, pick it up is Becky Ryan. So it takes and it giveth. <laughs> to say it all evens out in the long run on those on those let cords, but it doesn't feel that way sometimes. It never does. does. It? <laughs> never does. 13, Score is 13-16 now. A little tight, very nice drop from Becky Ryan, but Radzikowska was there at the hip level, and by the time she made contact down by her knee, unable to come up with that 14, roll attempt. Just like that, this is a completely different game. It's 15-16. Yeah, just uh, Columbus keeping a couple balls low and the breakers not being able to dig them out and all of a sudden. Working more of the middle now. Seen that since the change of end. And it set up the dink winner. That thing was beautiful. Absolutely. Anybody can hit a hard winner, Cameron. Who can hit a slow one? Great job by Becky Ryan. And yes, fantastic job of three or four dinks. She obviously likes that inside out forehand dink to pull her wide. But if you can set it up with two or three into the middle, it doesn't allow Eva Radzikowska to be looking for that one. And she has to keep moving laterally. And that's what created the error right there. Great job by Becky Ryan and Lily Rain. So just as a reminder, the last time we took a little break in terms of a timeout, it was 14 to nine with the breakers on top, now 16 apiece. So not only at the change of end, but also since that timeout, things have definitely shifted. It seems like testing more of the middle. We've seen a few more backhands from Summers as well in terms of dinking. So maybe a little bit more patient, patience on the side of Columbus Pickleball Club. And, and they're, I think they're just finding the rhythm from the back of the court and the mid court, where earlier on in the match, the breakers were getting those at chest 
and, and kind of shoulder height. And yeah. now they're kind of having to bend lower waist and below on some of those drops from uh, from Columbus. And, uh, you know, they're reaping the benefit of that with a few errors from the breakers. So let's see if the Bay Area breakers can find a little bit of their nerves here. Just settle those. What a stab. But Summers finally gets one back. Big backhand angle, big forehand angle, and you're exactly right. Phenomenal get by Becky Ryan on the first one, but too much power on the second ball from Summers. storm of that initial drive from Radzikowska. Summer's in a reasonable spot to poach on that next ball, but great hands from Millie. Sometimes there's a little more hesitation with that backhand to poach, right? Like, you gotta be really feeling yourself. <laughs> oh, that's a sad story there. But yes, you're exactly right, Cameron. Not quite the extension or the power for most players. Some, some players prefer the, prefer the power on their two-hander, but forehand poach, I'm a big fan of that. Sometimes a little dicey on the backhand side. Oh, and missed return. That is not the time you want to find one of those. It's 19-17. catching Becky Ryan off balance. And we have now hit the freeze for the Bay Area Breakers. Pickleball Club will earn one more point as they get to 18, but now they are also in a freeze. So each team must have the serve to win a point. the middle, score remains 2018. A second shot now for the Bay Area Breakers. She just let it fly a little too much. And there, the execution was the exact same thing. It was literally a carbon <laughs> copy of that previous point, and she kept that one down, and she was rewarded with the point. to get pumped up as he's about to get ready for men's doubles as that will be up next. So Pablo Tejas will play alongside Christian Alshon facing off against Yates Johnson and Carson Klinger. We've got Cameron Blackwood standing by with our ladies winners. All right, Cameron, take it away. Eva, you guys came out firing this morning, but they started to creep in at the end. How you guys? How were you able to close it back out? Uh, you know, I think at the end is all about you know the partner you have next to you and 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 having that confidence. You know that even when things go wrong, you know we can count on each other. You know I know what Rachel is gonna do, so it takes a little bit of pressure off. You know, and then you just finish as a team. Well, you did just that, and it's cold out here this morning. The wind started to swirl a little bit. We have the sun coming in. How much did that play a factor in this morning's match? Uh, the sun is so 
tough on that side. It's really hard to see the ball. I hit a backhand high volley that I literally couldn't see, just swung. Um, but, you know, first match is under our belt, so we're gonna feeling good moving forward. There you have it. Next up, you guys, we have men's doubles. You don't want to go anywhere. It's hard to find supplements that work. No, thank you. You need supplements that are backed by science with natural and plant-based ingredients and that are third-party tested. Because cleaner is better. Like Aura Organic. Plant-based supplements made from the earth. It's hard to find supplements that work. No, thank you. You need supplements that are backed by science with natural and plant-based ingredients and that are third-party tested. Because cleaner is better. Like Aura Organic. Plant-based supplements made from the Earth's most powerful plants for your immune health, gut health, workouts, and more. Find out more at AuraOrganic.com. Introducing Skechers Pickleball, the official footwear of Major League Pickleball. They're ultra lightweight and responsive for incredible speed. They have Goodyear rubber outsoles with a specialized pickleball design for increased side-to-side -side stability and agility. Plus, they feature shock-absorbing foam and Skechers' famous relaxed fit design for incredible comfort game after game. Conquer the court in comfort. Skechers Pickleball, the official footwear of Major League Pickleball. Match point, it's all up to me. Nothing can get in my way. And when they ask, what are you gonna do next? I'll say, I'm going. We're going to Margaritaville. You can go to Margaritaville too. Visit margaritavilleresorts.com. Next up, it is men's doubles. Pablo Tejas, Christian Alshon facing off against Yates Johnson and Carson Klinger. Cameron Irwin up alongside Adam Stone. Cameron Blackwood courtside as well. So give me a little bit of a glimpse into this matchup. Where do you think this one's going to go? I, I think this is going to be a very similar matchup to the women's where the breakers are going to be the more offensive minded team and uh, the Columbus Pickleball Club is gonna be a little more calm, collected, uh, a little bit slower picking their spots, and, and I think the breakers are just gonna let it fly. So that's how I see it going. Um, Which is interesting, because it's kind of a carbon copy of what we just saw in the women's game yeah, right. in terms of, of kind of the same type of style. Definitely, definitely, and, and that's exactly what I expect to see, and we have two also left-handed, right-handed matchups. We didn't, we didn't see any switching around in the women's match, but I, I would be shocked and if we see that here with C Carson, CJ Klinger on the right side for Columbus and Pablo Tellez on the right side for the Breakers. All right, well, let's take a look at head to head between these two teams. You can see not only their dupers, but the win probability, their team duper, and then their duper power rating. Is so this a close matchup? I, I think it's fair to say <laughs> 49 to 51. <laughs> yeah, you can definitely see the difference there. Just real close. It's always fun to look at the dupers and see exactly how they play out. You've got all the team duper ratings as well in terms of the challenge. Uh, level right now and I'm looking at you've actually got the Atlanta bouncers up top all 12 it's really interesting in terms of uh, categorization all right so getting us started is the southpaw in Pablo Teas
Hopefully we get a Christian Alshon trick shot in this match. He's the, he's the self-proclaimed tweener king. Let's see if we get one right here. Oh, I thought he was gonna start with one. Johnson, come on. <laughs> Who's the tweener king, he says. He says, uh-uh, give me the title. Also, how about that shot from Pablo Tejas? Put that ball back into the corner. It was a thing of beauty. I mean, the hand speed on these players out here, men and women, is just ridiculous. If you guys think this is a game and not a sport, come to MLP and watch and then talk to me after. <laughs> I thought that conversation was over at this point. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Maybe it is. Maybe, at maybe, least in my brain it is. Yeah, maybe that's old news. I shouldn't even have said anything <laughs> because this, these guys, it's, it's, it's good stuff. Oh, okay, replay of a let's serve. Courtney Johnson always doing a great job down there. Fantastic referee. Yeah, you can see the explosive movement from Christian Alshon right there. Unable to, to come up with that second Ernie attempt in the same point, but the man can move, the man can jump. Look for him to take those down the line dinks with Ernie's throughout the match. And it's all clinger all day. The young buck coming through with a nice three shot combination on the poach, just standing in the middle of the court and challenging both breakers. Sean was firing those forehands from above shoulder level and CJ Klinger with some great digs. Right, tough, tough luck there. In a perfect position to strike that first volley. Clip the tape, caught him in the right shoulder. C.J. Klinger, definitely a stalwart on tour. He comes in uh, with an RV with his dad and travels to a lot of the tournaments. Pretty cool story. Nice. That ball just wide now. He says his favorite pickleball memory is playing pickleball with his dad in tournaments. So what a good 16-year-old son there, <laughs> giving, giving dad a shout out. <laughs> Miss serve from Yates Johnson. See a couple players blowing on their hands, trying to feel those fingers. Ill-advised speed up. You can see Alshon kind of putting his hands up, saying calm down, wait for that one, dink that ball back. Great cover in the middle from Yates Johnson. And a couple loose points here from the breakers. Still plenty of wiggle room early in this game uh, men's doubles match. A little too much on that from Alshon. Yes, Starts it, to work around the corner. And he's a big fan of loading his forehand. And what I mean by that, a lot of players like to sit backhand. He actually likes to step to his left and slap that forehand. As you can see, he generates a lot of whip and a lot of power on that forehand side. Uh, Columbus Pickleball Club not able to come up with that volley. Yeah. Nice job from Yates Johnson there as the drop sat up about waist level. And instead of being safe and dinking that back, he decided to drive it at the body of Alshon. Nice two shot combination. Lost his balance there. Johnson, if he needed an extra step, he kind of ended up lunging for that ball at the last moment. It's not the position you want to be in to drive the ball. Yeah, definitely, <laughs> definitely. At least from what I'm told. <laughs> 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 Tough 
tough break from Pablo after a really nice uh, top spin third from Alshon. Pablo could not come up with the backhand volley. Incredible amount of, of combination of spin and power from Alshon. I believe all of those shots are going in and he's hitting it with a lot of pace. Tough to do. A little run here from the breakers. These last two minutes or so squeezing their way back into this one. Oh, that is a thing of beauty. I mean, he literally hit that on his shoe tops. Phenomenal roll third from Alshon, and we have a little bit of sustained momentum for the breakers. Oh my, flying in is Alshon. I'm not even sure that ball was gonna stay in bounds, but he didn't care. Yeah, I mean, incredible power too. He even got a late break crashing to the middle on that poach and still had enough uh, court coverage and movement to slap that forehand right into the right leg of CJ Klinger. So 11 to nine, Bay Area Breakers are on top and I believe Cameron Blackwood is down on the court as well. What's going on, Cam? Wind is definitely starting to pick up just a little bit. You're seeing them playing some balls that are definitely flying out and they're hitting them just in case they might be falling in but on the side of Columbus I don't I don't mind that they didn't come up on top over the changeover because they got enough points now they're going to go to the better side where they have the sun behind them uh, on the other side they're playing quick I'm surprised right now usually men's doubles they slow it down a little bit create a lot longer points uh, not the case this morning everyone is uh, fired up looking to end these points very very quickly and I think that's because the ball is it's chilly out here and it's a lot faster it is definitely playing pretty quick out here you can see both of our teams right now yeah, and uh, Cameron we mentioned earlier that uh, Scott Crandall is helping out the breakers. We also have a very great pickleball mind and great senior pickleball pro player, Paul Olin, helping out the Columbus Pickleball Club. So really cool to see these senior pros who have a lot of experience, a good mind for the game, kind of giving some knowledge to these less experienced pro players. That's a great point by you. It's one of the fun aspects of MLP. is that you've got team owners and team coaches as one just hits the hip there of Claire. Yeah, Yates Johnson telling, telling CJ to uh, let that ball go, but he couldn't quite get out of the way. Yes, coaching very encouraged in MLP. You can do it in between points. You don't have to even wait for a changeover. for the inside out. Yeah, I think I think he, his first inclination was just to rip that one hard and uh, the Cardinal sent a pickleball changing your mind. <laughs> Man, Klinger is showing up though. Yeah, big hands and I think Yates Johnson just got kind of caught watching his partner dig those balls out and he wasn't quite where he needed to be for that for that last dink attempt. I think watching really great defense in pickleball might be one of my favorite things. There's a good finish from Johnson. Wow, what a phenomenal shot from Yates Johnson using full extension on the kitchen line, able to get a lot of topspin. No chance for Pablo Tellez to come up with that response. Yeah, quality speed up from Alshon there. I think Pablo would love to have that one back with his lefty forehand in the middle. Can't make them all. And there's the decision all Sean, I think, was looking for. Gets pushed a little bit more wide, though, so he can actually take that up the line. Mm -hmm. Yes, and really fantastic soft stuff, the first four or five shots at that point from Columbus, but just too much offense from Christian Alshon. There's a nice duck, and you see Yates Johnson talking to uh, his younger partner, CJ, just letting him know a lot of these balls are going out. 
as I back-to-back -back let goes in a slight <laughs> stare down from Christian Alshon. As I say, the most underrated skill in pickleball. The let, stare down? No, letting out, ball, <laughs> <laughs> letting out balls go out, but the stare down. That was well played. Well played, Thank partner. <laughs> There's the tweener king. Tweener king. Each team's got one. It should be worth two points. I don't. I don't even care if you win or lose the point. <laughs> you get, you get style points. Bonus point. <laughs> <laughs> uh, tough luck. I uh, wouldn't say it was one he would always want to speed up from Pablo Tellez, but once it clipped the tape and went up high, Yates Johnson uh, had the response. Where does the location with Pablo being a lefty? Where does the location of the speed up kind of get looked at to go when you're going against him? See, that's a tough thing about a lefty. I know. Because so all your patterns are different. You're often looking at that sh dominant arm right shoulder. Well, it's different for a lefty, so you have to change up your patterns and you have to attack uh, different spots against a lefty. Not always easy. You know, I've played Tyler Loon a million times, and <laughs> y it, it, if you go with the right shoulder on him, he hits a two-handed backhand about 90 miles an hour. So you got you got to mix up your spots. Uh, there's no question about it. So the tweener king is out on the court. Then we have the Ernie king who you mentioned and Tyler Loon. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Are they just like controlling their own lands out here? Like yes. do they get certain courts just like <laughs> their own their own territory? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, they they very well might. And then you can attack. So there is a look. Now on to the grandstand where you're getting a chance to see our multi-court coverage right now. So you've got Utah Black Diamonds out there along with DC Pickleball team. So it looks like the men's doubles, the Black Diamonds just won 21-16 uh, against Sam Query and Stefan Avern. So not sure exactly what happened in the women's doubles, but uh, they are really close on par with us at the end of the finishing that men's doubles match. In. And I believe Utah was actually up 1-0. Okay, gotcha. And there's a look to our score here in championship court. 17-15. that communication. Uh -oh. One of the issues, a lot of big advantages to having two forehands in the middle, but that might be one of the, the issues for these guys, both with great drives too. Got to communicate early. That was smooth from Tejas. Yeah, right at the left hip of Yates Johnson, who was kind of breaking towards the middle. Perfect spot from Pablo on that speed up. A nice pace, didn't overdo it either. The ball would have stayed. You. Just a little too much extension, and Alshon is getting into Alshon at this point. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I love to see it. I love the emotion. There it is right there in terms of emotion. 19-17 <laughs> now. We always like to say same guy. Rips a winner right in the middle of the net on the next one. <laughs> Seems like it's turned into a head-to-head -head battle right now between Alshon and Claire. Absolutely, and you see Alshon very comfortable stepping off to the left, almost doing a half Ernie on a lot of those speed ups uh, with his forehand. Uh, lots of power, lots of spin though. That's a big drive cross court. That's a long drive. Yes, and what a phenomenal return by Tejas. It was three inches from the line. So Johnson to come up with that quality of a shot from that position, phenomenal. The net. And Claire wants that back. That ball just sat up too high. Mm -hmm. Great loose arm finish from Alshon. But they put themselves in a great position. 2018, or excuse me, 2019 now. Yeah! And they earn the side out. Score remains 19-20. Yeah, exactly right. The correct. Johnson thought they were at 20, but no, they were frozen. Oh, my. Whoa. Oh, and oh. Tejas 
<laughs> I believe touched the post. Yes, he did with that foot on the landing. It was not on the oh. takeoff, it was on the landing. It was so beautifully executed as well. Score is now 20-20, I believe. No way, that ball was six inches behind him. To get a snap and down at the feet of his opponent off of that let cord, just phenomenal, just control of his body and knowing where he was on the court, Christian Alshon. And I do like Yates in that neutral cross-court uh, dink rally with Alshon. As you see, Alshon likes to kind of hide his backhand and hit more forehands. So I know Yates is disappointed with himself for not being able to win that, that mini battle. And we haven't seen many of those, to be honest, in this entire game. It's kind of been more head-to-head -head between both sides. Nice job from uh, Klinger, able to jam up Alshon, who is a little late not only coming forward, but stepping to his left, looking for that forehand. Yeah, I think, I think there was a little pump fake from Yates, who was considering driving that ball, decided to go with the roll drop and just threw off his rhythm a little bit. Another game point opportunity for the Bay Area Breakers. Right. Ball is he crossed the plane, so he didn't contact the ball. His right foot came across, broke the plane of the net. Courtney Johnson on it, Cameron. Yeah, and here's a look right there. And actually, that was a great shot. That is the correct call from Johnson. Nice job. You saw it on the replay there. That was exactly the kind of uh, kitchen cam you got to love. Great job by our crew here. Very nice return, able to get it fully cross court to the clinger backhand. So not, not easy, I'm just saying, not easy to do from that point from Tejas. Two really good returns from him the last couple minutes. Another game point opportunity. And there's the inside out setup, and Tejas was just waiting on it. He had two. Almost earnings that were called for faults, but then finally he finished it off in perfect fashion. Look at that beauty. Yeah, an incredible setup from his partner Alshon with a little shoulder fake on the inside out dink. So 22 to 20, keeping things awfully close, but in terms of team score, area breakers are looking mighty fine right now. I mean, we got what we wanted, though. I mean, we saw the duper. We saw the duper right there. We knew it was going to be close. I mean, we got a two-point game here, 22-20, exactly what we expected. Yeah, right. It was 40. What was it? 49 percent and 51. Yeah, I think it was 0.01 difference or something like that. So, uh, yay, duper on point. All right, we've got Cameron Blackwood standing by with our. Our winner, she's down there right now with Tejas and Alshon. Take it away, Cam. One at a time, one at a time. Let's go, we got it, come on. Pablo, let's talk about this team aspect here. How much momentum does the women's win bring into this men's doubles? A lot, a lot. It gives us a little breathing and to play a little more risky, I would say. And when you guys, you, you guys had a nice lead there, it gets tight in the end. Now you're at hold. How, what does the strategy change to close it out? Uh, you just gotta stay aggressive. Don't go for anything special. It's so key and kind of don't think. If you're thinking, you're gonna be overthinking. So empty the mind. There you go. Now we have mixed doubles coming up next. You guys don't want to get, go anywhere. We'll be right back with more MLP. At From With Pickleball, we believe in the power of our sport to unite a community. We have introduced hundreds of people to pickleball by funding a 10-court public facility in our hometown with leagues and lessons to make everyone feel valued. We take that same approach to our business with personalized customer service and same-day shipping from our huge inventory. When you order from From With Pickleball, you're supporting a small business and a diverse community of pickleball fanatics. We have the gear you need 
and the service you can trust. The Pro XR Pickleball Paddle answers the age-old question of how to get paddle speed and control with the same paddle and one grip, and this is it. Pro XR gives you more spin, greater control, and quicker reloads on every shot in the game because you always have that constant feel for that leverage and control and paddle speed that we're all looking for. Pro XR is the most revolutionary technology in pickleball. And I said, Sarah Day, no one's here. Like, are you getting this? You get, you know? So if he wants the end, water doesn't, doesn't have to be boring. Anything? Turn it up with Circle. With over 40 delicious flavors and a dial that controls your intensity, Circle starts a party for your taste buds. No sugar, no calories, and no artificial flavors. Just good times. Circle, it's your water, your way. Try Circle at drinkcircle.com. Welcome back, everyone, to MLP here at beautiful Bell Bank Park. Uh, excited to get this first mixed match going. The Bay Area Breakers off to a quick 2-0 lead. So uh, Columbus Pickleball Club's got to pick it up here. It's now or never because the next match win for the Breakers will seal the deal with three. Well, and to that point, we'll still play both mixed matchups because you're playing for points right now in terms of seeding for these three groups taking place here in the challenger level, group A, B, and C. We'll also have three different groups in the premier level. But for now, it's all about the challenger level on this Thursday from Mesa, Arizona. There's a look at Millie Rain. We talked about her when she was in the women's doubles matchup. And I, and I believe, Cameron, that the uh, seeding uh, once you come out of group play is uh, win percentage and then point percentage. If it, if it, so it's obviously wins, team wins are the most important, but points count. So we, we mentioned it multiple times on the broadcast. Everything matters. These players need to leave it all out there, even if the situation looks Dying. Yep, so it does go to point differential percentage is the second key. And then I like that they said coin flip <laughs> if it gets to three because there's no way it's ever going to the <laughs> third part. Coin flip. <laughs> Everyone's having some fun here, though, on championship court. Yes, and so it looks like the, um, the home team is the breakers. And what that means is the Columbus Pickleball Club said their first mixed matchup, and then the breakers got to respond. To that. And so that's what we have here. And that's Caitlin Kerr having some fun. Sorry, I'm too distracted. I know you're talking pickleball, and I'm like, hey. I, I, I wish I were, I wish I were dancing. She's of course with the Las Vegas Night Owls. She's, she's, she's the hype girl, you she's know. She's the hype girl. She, she get she's it going. got me hyped. She's doing a great job. <laughs> so Summers will get us started. She'll be playing alongside Alshon. Nice roll third shot from Rachel Summers. Yates Johnson overextending just a little bit to cover that fourth ball. Slippery. Slippery, slippery. Slippery, slippery. Have we, what are you calling that now? That I, shot? I don't know. That's, that's the Gabe Tardio. And yeah. Kyle's one of the first, Kyle Yates, one of the first people to do it. So I'm not sure there's a name. I think it's name. like the slippery fish. Because yeah. it like flips over like a fish, you know, and it's <laughs> going through the water. Hey, I, I like it. Thank I like you. it. Let's go with that. I mean, we're broadcasters. This is what we do. We're going to make stuff up. <laughs> and, a, and a great ole there from Yates Johnson falling down on his backside, but letting that ball go out. Graceful. He's on the floor again. <laughs> <laughs> two for two, two points. This time the front, he was on the backside the previous one, this time laying down. 
doing the Superman there. Good stuff from Yates Johnson and leaving all on the court. Three, one. I'm serious. That was very graceful. Nice work. There's an art to falling. Yeah, Gates Johnson questioning that ball coming off with so much spin from Alshon's paddle. It kind of puts you in a decision point. Am I, can I can I let these balls go? And it makes it very tough. Miss return. And again, every point counts and it's hard, especially now the serve and return game becomes that much more critical because you're losing points off those. Interesting choice, going with a tweener speed up yeah. to Johnson. So usually people do tweeners when they don't have a lot of time. Uh, Alshon just does them at any point in time. He had, he had all the time in the world to do whatever he wanted to there, and he chose the tweener. Some help from the net. Yeah, that's a heavy drive from Yates, and I know that Millie got a little assistance from the net, but she was uh, in a great position to let that one fly on the two-handed backhand side. Up into that point, Summers did a nice job diffusing the pressure that was coming her direction. She did, initially off the drive and then a couple quality dinks, but leaving that middle dink a little too high and Yates Johnson stepping, stepping over to the middle to clean up. I've seen a lot of tricklers this yes, morning. Yes, definitely. A and lot. I mean, it, it really comes and goes. I'm not sure there's really a, uh, like, a, you know, weather that allows it to happen. Just some matches have a lot, some don't. Just easy movement from Christian Alshon, who is lurking in the middle, Millie thinking she had a chance to catch him up the line, but he's right back in position where he needs to be. There you go, Rachel Summers with rolling that drop again. Wind a little bit in her face, pushing it wide though. spot there from Alshon going inside out with the forehand. Often he's going to be taking that middle or at Millie Rain, but to put one occasionally to the left side of Yates Johnson's a great play. It looks like there's a call on one of the, or questions on one of the calls. Yes, yeah, so on that return, Yates wondering if he should, uh, challenge. should challenge or not, but Courtney Johnson letting him know she did not see it clearly. Yeah, very nice. Always a little bit easier when you're in the midcourt to let that ball go out than right on the kitchen line. But either way, great job by her getting out of the way. Yeah, great return from Yates Johnson. Completely fine with that roll from uh, Rachel Summers. It's been a great shot for her. Can't mm -hmm. make them all. And Millie and Alshon very comfortable with each other and they know each other's game. They're in the same practice group down in South Florida. We gotta love the replay there. Millie Rain doing a solid job chasing that ball down. Alshon got her back there, but you're exactly right. I'm, I'm not going to lie, I didn't think Millie had a shot. Great, I didn't either. Great job, <laughs> full extension and, and able to get that ATP even short in the court. Just beautiful job by Millie. Couple times Alshon, kind of going behind Yates Johnson. We'll see how much court Yates continues to take. Always, always a fine line for these fellas of being a presence but not overextending. So uh, that's that's mixed doubles in a nutshell for a man. So it's 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 not a perfect science. You just got to get it as close as you can to optimal. Eleven to nine now. So they will change ends. Bay Area Breakers. 
with a two-point advantage on the side of the Bay Area Breakers. Cameron Blackwood is checking in with some of the team right now for Columbus Pickleball Club, listening to the huddle. Maybe we'll catch up with her here in a minute after she hears what's going on in that team huddle. And we see Paul Olin dropping some knowledge on the squad down there with those beautiful red gloves, going with the team colors. I wish I had some red gloves on right now. <laughs> There's a look now out on to your grandstand court or court two, where the Utah Black Diamonds and DC Pickleball team are going head to head. Utah up two to zero. Exactly. Uh, mixed doubles. Exactly right, Cameron. I think both uh, DC Pickleball Club and the Columbus Pickleball Club needing this win to stay in their respective matches. All right, let's check in with Cameron Blackwood now who listened in to Columbus's huddle, I believe. Interesting strategy they have. What they said is, let's go hard right at Christian Alshon's hips. And what that's going to do is they want that to isolate Rachel's because their end goal right now is to isolate her and go after her. But they also need to have the first punch at Alshon. So that's the strategy heading into this. Let's go ahead and hit a nice speed up towards him and then go directly right at Summer, see if we can't get some more points. All right, great work, Cameron. We love that stuff. So now we've got a little bit of a scouting report from the Columbus Pickleball Club. Let's see if they can execute. And then not even just that, let's see if it works. Yeah, so that's right. So kind of looking to kind of freeze Alshon and then pick apart Rachel Summers. Reasonable strategy. that was in the cheek from Alshon. Uh, 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 at least it hit the tape first. <laughs> Nice attack from Millie Rain. And that wasn't particularly high. I was about waist level or below. So great pull by her, able to catch Alshon a little off balance. Great whipping drive from Yates Johnson. Sean takes a shot up the line. Absolutely, stepping over to the middle nicely and not, not even a bad drop from Yates Johnson, just able to create some offense from almost nothing. Excellent job, Christian Alshon. You, you hear some oohs and some ahs. <laughs> Oh, so it was overruled. Okay, so what happened is our head ref overruled the Yates Johnson call, and Yates is trying to figure out if he should challenge or not. And there's a look right there in terms of the close call. Ooh, baby, I think that's a little back. Oh, I thought that caught right no, there. I don't know. I don't know. I yeah, mean, come on. I mean, Who how, gets your eyes checked, I I'm Adam? Saying, how can you? I don't know if you can over. Oh, man, that is wild how close Adam, that is. Look at that bowl. I think it's out, to be honest. It literally has. Look the, at this. Oh, great job by our crew. There is yellow. There is pickleball touching that? the outside of that line right there. I don't know. That, that ball does not compress. I do not believe it touched the line. Are you serious? I am very serious. I never joke, Cameron. Well, I know the ball doesn't compress, <laughs> so it's a little different than a tennis ball. See, I come from the volleyball world where that ball, that ball is 100% in. Right, but see, the thing is, is call on the court is a big factor here. Like, when the call is this close, overruling is just not very easy. But if I had to pick one, I would say that ball's out. Okay. So no compression of the ball doesn't means that it's not squishing down. 
I'm being told by my crew that it's the rule of thirds here. Uh -huh. <laughs> the crew always in our ear. Always we, in our ear. We love most of it. It's like, but you know, not always. I would love to say it's the angel and devil on your shoulder, but I think it's <laughs> more the latter than, yeah. Yeah, than may, the may, other. Maybe you're right. Maybe you're right. <laughs> and I only kid. I love this crew. It's, it's a perfect time to sh give a little shout out to old Boxcar Productions in the booth helping us out in the truck. We love it. AB is the angel in the crew, in case anyone was wondering. I would actually think that's true. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, I got, I got some really nice rec play in with Kyle Selenko of Boxcar Production. We were lighting people up yesterday, I'll tell you that much, Cameron. Let's go. It's only because you didn't face off against me. What, what happened? Oh, it was, they called it out. Apparently I was wrong. Rarely happens. Rarely happens. <laughs> I kid. Wow. Unbelievable shot from Rachel Summers splitting the defense up the middle and hitting that ball three inches from the baseline. That is incredible shot making from Rachel Summers. I've seen that a few times from her. Nice speed ups, just kind of rolling those to the baseline. She's found a few winners now. <laughs> and it seemed like a change in decision making right there, like you mentioned before with Alshon. Cardinal sent a pickleball. Not sure if it was the court positioning of Johnson, but he flubbed that one. It's a very technical term. <laughs> flubbed it. All right, Columbus. A little change of momentum after that call. Well, and it's also important to note, Columbus down 0-2 right now. So in order to find the match victory, as the pressure continues from Alshon, yeah. they would have to pick up both of these mix and then head to the Dream Breaker, which is the tiebreaker. I'd be fine going to the Dream Breaker. Oh, Why yeah. not? Let's get, let's get this party started the right way. It's what everyone wants, Cameron. <laughs> it's for the fans, for everyone. It's just exciting. For the fans. 14-17. Yeah. Oh, and he was all over that. Yeah, it's a great job from Yates Johnson, kind of making Alshon feel like he had a window to go to there behind him, and he closed that window very, very quickly. So very, very different vibe of this match, really since the, the little break we had for the challenge call, and Columbus Pickleball Club really stepping it up with a four-point lead here in the latter stages of this first mixed match. So four points of difference, like you mentioned. So in terms of what you might be seeing on this side of the court, what's the uh, equation for success here? You see uh, Scott Crandall talking to Summers right now, but how can they make the difference here with four points trailing? Right, just really specific strategy-wise, I'm not really so sure. I think that uh, Columbus Pickleball Club has really raised their level, and I think that they just need to stay aggressive and uh, definitely not get too touchy-feely with some of that stuff at the kitchen line. Trust their shots. Trust they both have really quality top spin forehands and let it fly a little bit. I know that's, you know, not so easy to do when you're, you know, you're down four points at the late stages of the match, but I think that's really what's going to get it done for them um, is, those, uh, is those aggressive shots and those aggressive plays. No touchy-feely play. Got it. Oh, man. <laughs> well, they, they went for it there, but the counterattack's too strong. No touchy-feely. No touchy-feely. <laughs> nope. there, yeah, there you go. And it just continues right now for the Columbus Pickleball Club. It is now game point for Rain and Johnson. Oh, it was on her paddle. And she had it. Looking for that Alshon backhand. Very, very much not easy to get it to the Alshon backhand with his great footwork. But if you get it there, definitely a weaker, weaker wing than the forehand side. So an 
another point on the board for the Bay Area Breakers. As a reminder, the freeze does not go into effect for the Bay Area Breakers until they hit 18. I think there might have been a few of those going long, but. Yeah, definitely. You can, you can hear the uh, uh, the partners uh, when the ball is coming to their partner calling them off, but hard ball, lots of power from your opponents, tough to let it go. That's an overhead for sure from Yates Johnson. That was demolished. Yeah, nice, nice loose arm there from Yates. Uh, really whipping through, creating a lot of pace. Hulk smash. That ball is out of bounds. Not even gonna challenge it. Nope, here's a look at it. So our first mixed matchup game has been completed. Columbus Pickleball Club has picked up a point on the board and I do believe, yes, that ball was wide as you can see it on the replay. So 21 to 17, Rain and Johnson. Here's another good look from our crew. That one guys, I know that one's out. <laughs> Great job with all of these cameras going down each of our lines so we can catch all these close calls. One of the great additions to the game of pickleball is more and more camera angles coming into the game. And our box car, car crew production has done a phenomenal job setting up all these cameras. We can catch just about every angle we need. challenge here, but the call does stand. So just catching you up to speed a little bit here on championship court. So game number three, the first mixed doubles matchup does go the direction of the Columbus Pickleball Club with the ball being called out of bounds on Alshon's final shot. So now we've got Yates Johnson as well as Millie Rain, our victors down with Cameron Blackwood. Go ahead, Cam. You guys, we're down 0-2. Talk to us about the strategy heading into this match and then how it changed throughout the match on those changeovers and those timeouts. Uh, I was pretty pissed about the first one, um, so it was good to get revenge. Uh, I think we just used kind of like that momentum, um, used that anger, um, and just brought it to them and, and it and worked out. And a lot of people don't know, you guys don't play together necessarily on the outside tour. You're drafted onto a team. How many weeks have you and Yates had to train before heading into MLP? Uh, we actually haven't trained at all. I've seen him at a couple tournaments, but we haven't trained at all. We just kind of went out there and we were like, let's go. We both have the skill set, stay out of the way of his drives, and let's get it. We guys did have some success. We're on to the next mix of doubles. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with more MLP. Galope Ultra, 2.6 carbs and 95 calories. to find supplements that work. No, thank you. You need supplements that are backed by science with natural and plant-based ingredients and that are third-party tested. Because cleaner is better. Like Aura Organic. Plant-based supplements made from the Earth's most powerful plants for your immune health, gut health, workouts, and more. Find out more at AuraOrganic.com. 
Introducing Skechers Pickleball, the official footwear of Major League Pickleball. They're ultra lightweight and responsive for incredible speed. They have Goodyear rubber outsoles with a specialized pickleball design for increased side-to-side -side stability and agility. Plus, they feature shock-absorbing foam and Skechers' famous relaxed-fit design for incredible comfort game after game. Conquer the court in comfort. Skechers Pickleball, the official footwear of Major League Pickleball. I love it so much. Thank you so much. Championship court, the home to Major League Pickleball. Of course, presented by the Margarita Bill. It's time to get to the second mixed doubles matchup. Caitlin Kerr, I mean, she's got this crew dancing, and it's still not even 10 a.m. here in Arizona. You gotta love that, bringing the whole energy with her. <laughs> so let's take a look now at the head-to-head -head for this next mixed doubles matchup and see exactly who's facing off. We've got Pablo Teas and Eva Ratzinska facing off against Winger and Ryan. And again, we saw it in the last one. It was 51 and 49. It's the exact same thing. But I believe the opposite direction now between these two teams. That's right. And you can see that duper power rating as well. And that is factoring in not only doubles, but the singles as well. So Tejas Radzikowska, very much uh, quality singles players. And that's why their power rating is a little bit higher, even though it's 51% in this doubles matchup. So let's get to it. The second mixed doubles is now about to get started. In, in terms of the match score, right now the Bay Area Breakers are still up two to one in the score. Oh, we got. Oh, we got Tyson scouting. I mean, how is he going to be on camera with the hood on? We don't get to see the mullet. What the heck? Unbelievable. Maybe he chopped it off. Yeah. I don't think so. <laughs> That's a signature move, man. H. Johnson's got some hand warmers. That's a great idea. It really Whoever is. came up with that, it was smart. And I'll tell you what, we are very much even. We we're not pulling for anyone here in the booth, but I was nice to see Columbus get that, that first mixed doubles match so we can we can have this one really count. Let's see that dream breaker. I'm also loving the uh, dance moves from Becky Ryan. Give us more, Becky. Really, yeah, really nice, really nice. And we saw this match up in, in women's, uh, uh, Cameron, where we have the inside-out forehand dinking from Becky Ryan and then Radzikowska trying to neutralize it. I'm sure that pattern will continue throughout this match. Right up the middle. Yep, nice, nice step over from Pablo Tellez. And like you said earlier, didn't have to do too much. A nice little mid-paced attack from him. Perfectly placed. Great job from Radzikowska. From kind of a low position on her backside, uh, backhand side, was able to get it cross court to Becky Ryan's backhand. Fantastic attack. Hands from Teas. Yeah, that's it. That's one of my favorite resets when the paddle faces up towards the sky and you're just slightly slicing that ball. Man, I just I like that downy soft stuff. Oh, that's you know, anybody can hit it hard. You know, I already said that once or twice. Give me some soft stuff. Little little overextension there from Becky Ryan. Kind of got stuck in the middle of whether she was going to attack that ball or not. And when you hesitate. It makes it very, very difficult in the game of pickleball. Not a lot of time. You're so close to your opponent, just things happen so quickly. Any form of waffling or going back and forth between your decision-making process creates issues. Yeah, that's it. I might have just hit the wrong part of her paddle. Yeah, rock solid volley from CJ Klinger, catching Radzikowska right in the land of opportunity, AKA no man's land. Yeah. Yeah. And again, Taya is finding multiple shots right now, going right up the middle. Yeah, reasonable let go from Becky Ryan. I thought that ball yeah. was gonna sail long as well, but that's a phenomenal job of getting rotation what I mean by that top spin on the ball from Pablo Tellez. Ryan 
is hitting inside out forehands all the way on the past the left side of her hip. I don't think I've ever seen someone go that extended. She's not interested in any backhand to the kitchen line. <laughs> Actually, a uh, very old school player named Christine Barksdale is one of the only other players I've seen actually go to the left side of her body to hit a forehand. Yeah. That's exactly what Becky Ryan's doing. Good leap from Becky Ryan. She drops to her knees right there to get out of the way. Yeah, it pays to be short sometimes. Uh, so <laughs> I, I, I feel her pain on that one. Or I wouldn't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's got to be hard right now when you're thinking about Columbus. Trying, Becky Ryan seeing the majority of the balls, but to speed up, she's got a lefty in front of her with a big old forehand. She's yeah. got to speed up cross court. Or she's looking to at least. And that's tough. Yeah, it's not easy. Big drive from Radzikowska. I'll tell you what, I've been really impressed with the soft stuff from CJ Klinger, but in this mixed match, he's gonna have to take some chances and play a little bit more offensively. That was a great dink from Klinger. Yeah. Again, you've got both the lefties out there for the fellas. Yeah, and you can see when, when Klinger is contacting that dink, Tejas is actually on Radzikowska's side of the court. So you got to go behind the guy occasionally, keep him honest. Yeah. Solid finish. Yeah, too much power from the breakers right now. Just a lot of firepower, a lot of two, three, four shot combinations. Oh, wanted, wanted the poach, but a little low. We're, we're, we're going to label that one ambitious as he's going for the uh, forehand roll cross court poach <laughs> from his shoe tops. Hey, you got a six point advantage. <laughs> That's right, let it fly. Let's see what happens. Heat check. <laughs> Heat check for sure. <laughs> got a quick change of sides here. Columbus Pickleball Club's got to figure something out. And really, it, it, like I said, with the combinations, there hasn't been a lot of finishing in one shot. Uh, so Columbus has had some nice digs and some nice defense, but the sustained pressure from the breakers right now is just too good. So 11 to five right now. Let's take a look now out to the grandstand. Again, we're at the DC Pickleball team and Utah Black Diamonds. This one's close in the second mix matchup, 16-13. Yeah, and I believe the Black Diamonds are up 2-1 in are. this matchup. They are, and currently it's 16-14 in favor of the Black Diamonds. McMillan and Cassidy are out there right now. Balicelli and Murray are also the, the rare on our side. The rare double lefty combination from uh, Cassidy and McMillan. You don't see that too frequently. <laughs> Sometimes lightning does strike twice. <laughs> Seven to five now on championship court. Yeah, a boy, CJ Klinger. Very nice control of the kitchen line, keeping his opponents back. And a nice forehand up the middle for the winner. He's got some length to him. He does. Loose air, just a short little one minute side change can really can really just change things up a little bit. I do also have to give some props to uh, both Klinger and Ryan. He looks pretty aggressive at this moment. But I do like the energy these two have together, constantly coming back together at, in between each and every point. And a little bit of extra step or pep in their step. I'm all about the fighters. Oh. 
And there, finally, Ryan takes a shot up at Teyes. But she found the backhand, Cameron. And that, the right shoulder. Exactly, that was important. Those, like you mentioned earlier, those middle balls against Teyes are, are very tough to pull off with that big lefty forehand. So uh, for her obviously enjoying that inside out forehand, to be able to get that to his right shoulder was a phenomenal shot from Becky. job and I would almost like to see Becky's got stuck a couple times I'd almost like to see her hang out a little bit more to her left knowing that she has clinger in there in the middle yeah, lots of spin from uh, the paddle of Tejas and the short hop kind of half volley from Becky Ryan just a high degree of difficulty when there's that much spin on the ball Just too much heat off the paddle of Teyes. Unrelenting in this one. Yeah, really nice forehand, backhand, forehand, three shot combination. Just, man, there's just a lot of firepower. I don't care how good your defense is to come up with <laughs> three digs on, the, on those kind of offensive shots is gonna be a tall task for anyone. All right, now we have 14 to nine, so this is about the point we see timeouts have been taken almost in each of these games yep. instead of this point. But in terms of what we've got coming up next, we've got Cameron Blackwood, who's got something coming up next. What's going Cam? In the huddle here, they're just telling Becky Ryan, just stay steady with those dinks. And maybe on the second to third dink, go ahead and go at Paula Tell's back end. As we saw, they did have some success with that. And they're wanting Klinger to get big in the middle. They said, you have to come over, cover that middle a little bit more. Becky, go ahead and stay steady. Let's see if we can't get some more points on the board and make this interesting. Well, we always like interesting. Let's see if they can get it done right now as they trail by five. Great job, Cam. Again, Becky Ryan. And, and you see Teyes held line a little bit because she caught him a couple points previous. So when you can go to all the spots, it opens up everything and a great job of mixing up her spot by Becky Ryan. just a loose error there, but I like what CJ Klinger was doing, kind of protecting the backhand uh, of, or uh, the middle ball of Becky Ryan, allowing her to step over to her left and hit that forehand. We haven't said much <laughs> about Eva Radzikowska, <laughs> but right there she does beautifully. That's back-to-back -back points at the hand of Radzikowska. That time she missed, but really she made. She let that ball go, Cameron. <laughs> <laughs> that is a beautiful combo. Taya says, I've had enough, Becky Ryan. I think he threw out a little yeah, baby, at the end of that one, too. He was happy with himself. We're happy with him as well. Yeah, often when the ball clips the tape, changes the spin, and even on the soft shots when you have plenty of time, it still kind of messes with your brain when it clips the tape. Yeah! And again, reaching in. That's so that's, Ryan. that's two in the middle, and I hope next time she goes to the backhand to Tejas because I think he's going to be ready for the next time she tries that one. We'll see if she mixes it up or continues with that middle ball. Bad luck. CJ, he wasn't even cheating that bad, so I think he would have been in a good position to counterattack with that backhand, but... Radzikowska with a great shot. I just like that phrase. Cheating that bad. Yeah. <laughs> you can cheat, you just can't cheat that bad. It's true. <laughs> I know. Does it land? It does, but out of bounds. I believe that is the first backhand dink for Becky Ryan in this match. And unfortunately for her, it was a little too high. Yeah, 
great job from CJ Kling. I was really hoping he was going to take that ball over on Becky Ryan's side, and that's exactly what he did. He's not really releasing with too much power mm -mm. Uh, on those fourth, six, eight shots, whatever it may be, but the spin is just so heavy. Yeah! Exactly what I said. I didn't, I didn't, hoping she wasn't gonna go to the middle again. Tellez was ready and the breakers, phenomenal job in the mixed doubles. So the Bay Area breakers have officially won the match as they have now finished out the second mix of doubles. Emma, However, Emma. we've also got a chance, we've got to get a chance to catch up with them as Pablo Tejas has got to head over to Cameron Blackwood. Slowly, he's he's he's, he's saying, he's his, saying his nice victory. match. Yeah, he's taking yeah. his victory lap. <laughs> saying, saying nice match to his opponents. We appreciate that. Good sportsmanship, Pablo. Well, he's made his way that direction. Now it's time to catch up with our winners. I believe they are all set and ready to go. Go ahead, Cam. Eva, the Bay Area Breakers came out firing this morning. Tell us what was said in the team huddle before you guys stepped on the court this morning. You know, I feel like we have such a good chemistry on the team. You know, everyone was fired up. Everyone was ready to go. You know, it's like we know what to expect from each other. So it's it's literally fun to step on the court and just fight and give your best. You guys were up 2-0. You go down in the first mix. It's 2-1. What's the mind shift changing to get this win today? No mind shift. We want to stay aggressive. That's our game. And it worked, so we're going to keep doing it. There you guys go. Bay Area Breakers, they have won their first match this morning. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with more Everything MLP.